out, and I can just do that on the editing side. Just take out the mandolin and the, the voice. The whole thing, really. Alright, let's start the show. Hello and welcome to another edition of Hop Heroes, the show where we talk about our favorite drinks and our favorite heroes. I'm your host, Jordan Erith, and with me as always, we have talented artist and comic enthusiast, J.R. Gonzalez. Sup? What's up? And then we got my boy, Zach, who is feeling like a million bucks today. Z, how you living? Oh, I'm living great, man. You know, just, uh, I feel great. Um, living great. You know, yesterday, me and DK Metcalf had a workout together. <laughs> and um, it was like, it went really well. You know, like, okay. I think, like, T. he beat me at some things. T. I beat him at some things. And Time so, out. I'm a little bit fatigued, but Time overall, out. I feel pretty good. Several questions. First off, what could you possibly beat DK Metcalf in that involved f- physical activities? Um, Second question. <laughs> where, <laughs> where did you meet DK Metcalf? Because I'm very intrigued. And for those of you that don't know who DK Metcalf is, he's the new wide receiver the Seahawks drafted in the second round, and he's a freaking... Monster, dude, he's a unit. So, okay, so um, yesterday I was Alicia and I were driving around the neighborhood. We were actually taking uh, house tours of million dollar homes on Lake Washington, just like walking in, like, yeah, oh, 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 this is a mother in law suite. Wow, that's beautiful. Oh, bear claw tub. This is that's amazing. Yeah, we should, we should just pretending like we're about to buy that bear claw tub. Bear claw tubs are like the tubs that are like not part of the, the actual wall, but they have like their own stands on them. Ah, okay. um, anyway, so uh, as we were driving back home, we uh, pulled around the corner and I saw this dude running on the side of the road and he just looked like a fucking tank. And I was just like, Jesus, Scott, <laughs> this guy's f- like from a distance. I was just like, God dang, man, this guy's insanely big. And as we got closer, I was just like, wait, wait, that looks like no. And then and we drove past him and I was like. Alicia, that was fucking DK Metcalf. And she was like, no way. And so I turned around and like drove back and, and saw him again and then turned around again <laughs> and drove back to see him again to the point where I can see the tattoos on him. And then I pulled up a picture of him with his shirt off to make sure the tattoos matched. <laughs> and they did. Stalker-esque. And they did. Stalker-esque. Nah, dude. I like nah. It. I wasn't stalking. I was just doing my research, bro. I needed to be yeah. sure. That it was he recognized him. the same car just doing laps around him. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> like we 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 passed him at three times, and then, <laughs> and then and then I tweeted at him, I, and he didn't respond to my tweet. So ah, it's a real bro. yeah. Shot yeah. in the dark. Shout out to, shout out to DK Metcalf. The C- DBs are gonna have a problem with that guy because he is big, bro. He is, is a huge. monster. Runs like is a receiver. Whoo- yeah, he runs yeah. like a four three, and he's like looks like a goddamn bodyguard slash superhero, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then I got out of the car and I challenged him to a, to a race. Like we, I went on the run with him. Bro, <laughs> okay. do you remember when we challenged? First off, moving fuck, on. Fuck you. No, but do you remember when we challenged Blink, the the guy at the bar in Capitol Hill? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't know if we've had that conversation on the mic yet, but. We were at uh, Cha Cha, just drinking down there in the little cantina, and this guy is like, he has like a PSP or something. This was back in the day when PSPs were still kind of a thing, and it was me, Zach, and my buddy Tom, and this guy's walking around like, just talking to people, and then Zach goes, hey, what's your name? And he goes, Blink. He goes, Blink. Does that mean you're fast? He's like, yeah. He goes, all right, let's, let's go race. <laughs> race me right now. Race yeah, me. Race me. Race me. <laughs> oh, your name is Blink? Yeah, race me. So we went out in the back alleyway. I felt Behind like it was a Cha-Cha. scene of like Fast and Furious, but instead of cars, it was just dudes like stretching and shit. Like instead of revving their engine, it was just guys like doing Pilates, like getting ready to freaking yeah. sprint down the alley and shit. And I was just so so excited because I know how fast Zach is. And then we have Tom, who actually is fast. And then this guy's just doing pull ups on the fence, like next to the alleyway. He goes, "You guys racing?" I'm like, yeah. He goes, all right, I'm in. And he just walks up. <laughs> it was just like this random, random fucking race. And Blink gave everybody like a like a 15 yard start. Like he like let everybody get their leads. And then Zach's like ready. And Tom went barefoot because he was wearing like 
flops or something. On the asphalt in Seattle. On the asphalt just takes at the two shoes in the morning in the, in the alleyway behind Cha Cha. And then the race fucking goes, and Zach just got burned by a blink. It wasn't even close. <laughs> and the, the embarrassing thing is that he let me, he like said go, and then I was like, <laughs> Like sprinting as fast as I can, he just let me go, yeah. and then he caught me, dude, and just burned me. Like I was just like, "Holy shit!" This and he's is- done this before because he had somebody hold his PSP. He goes, "Hey, record this," and like <laughs> recorded him just <laughs> burning Zach down. I'm the on somebody's way. YouTube channel, like their highlight video of me just For getting sure. wrecked. For sure. Oh man, so that's what happened with DK Metcalf then as well. I'm assuming. Yeah, except I won this time. I gave him an yeah. answer. Yeah, so that never happened. Uh, and then we got our guy in the chair, uh, new edition, new permanent edition, the, the manager slash uh, editor slash jack of all trades, Vinny McBroom. How you doing, Vinny? <laughs> doing pretty well. How about you guys? I mean, hearing that story, geez, I'm, I'm ready for this episode now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I think uh, uh, we're all pretty excited about this episode. We're doing, uh, we're doing the boys. Um it is a uh, comic book slash, I don't know, would you call it comic, graphic novel? I don't know what the proper term uh, no, is. No, it's a, it was an ongoing series. It's a comic so, series. series. I would, yeah. yeah. And was. then we got it. It's coming to Amazon uh, July 26th to, a, to, to be an Amazon series. So we're going to prep the comic and then we're going to do a reaction after the show comes out. So it's, uh, if, you haven't, if you don't know what the boys are, um, <clears throat> it's pretty, pretty some interesting stuff. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, but first, the drink of choice today. Um, trying to figure out what to drink with the boys. And uh, Z brought up the great idea. Let's just do fucking tall boys. Let's just do some tallies, man. So everybody's got their variety. Zach's got the PBR. Great choice. I got the PBR as well. JR's got the horsecock Heineken. <laughs> And then, yeah, uh, that's a monster. That's like the, that's <laughs> that's a mega said, tall boy. You said twenty four ounce. I'm literally like messaging people. How do I buy twenty four ounce beer? It's like I didn't. You're understand the cutest thing I've ever seen. The concept of tall boys. What's so fucking twenty four ounces is so big, bro. That this yeah. is a tall what are, boy. You said tall boys twenty four ounce. This? So so this is what I was confused by as well because I always 16. bought six packs six packs of tallies. Right, I always get a six pack of tall boys and it's sixteen ounces. And then after doing some research about the origin of the tall boy, uh, 24 ounces is actually the tall boy. 16 ounces is called a pounder. Oh, Think you can suck my horse cock. Fuck. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. See, I always knew it. Got the tallies, baby. I always knew it as the tall boy is the 16, the 24 ounces is the horse cock, but apparently 16 ounces is a pounder. That's right. In my hand is one is big giant boy. horse cock. And it's a Heineken. <laughs> yeah. It's not the first time. <laughs> Damn, dude. It won't be the last either. Wow. Um, JR's the only one with the tall boy. We're we're just... Well, you guys can't see my video feed because we're doing the Skype call. No, the fucking but voice in the I'm going to let you guys just guess what I have. <laughs> Is that God? Dude, Is we know what you have. You sent a picture in the feed. You have a Rainier. Oh, yeah, that's right. God damn it. You have yeah, a Ron Yeh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to represent Tacoma. Everybody be drinking this shit out here. Yeah. It's yeah, so popular. let's go around and let's just have a moment and talk about how tall boys have personally impacted us. Um, tall boys have a very special place in my heart because, you know, you don't ever want Like, you get a six or a bottles and it's, you know, it's kind of classy. It's usually a craft beer. But you get a six or a tallies, you know it's going to be a good night. And it's also, it's there for you when you need it the most because not always do you have, you know, 12, 15 bucks lying around. But when you're a poor kid in college and all you got is six bucks, you need to get a nice buzz on. Look no further than a five ninety nine pack of Bush Light, or PBR, or Rainier, or Rolling mm-hmm. Rock. Mm-hmm. They're there for you. And hey, if you shotgun a tall boy in front of somebody that's shotgunning a regular beer, and then you beat him, street cred. So yeah, there's just the, so many you're, good you're, things. You're, you're the fucking man at that point. <laughs> you're the at fucking any part of beast. It. That's like that's beast. like dunking on somebody and then like having that like you put them on a poster, bro. And then your dick like bruises their cheek after you fucking dunk on them. Exactly. Tea bag exactly. in face. Yeah. That's like giving somebody a head start in a race and then just fucking burning them, dude. Dude, that's that. Would, oh my god, that'd be so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm gonna leave my fucking room if that happened to me. Like, hold my dick. Let me just fucking shotgun this tall boy. <laughs> hold shotgun your regular beer. Wow, Darren Sharper, hold my dick. <laughs> um, so I'm glad that you chose PBR Z because PBR actually, uh, after doing some research, Paps was the first canned beer. If no you guys way. didn't know what? that, 19, 1935, Paps was the Paps first was canned beer. Paps was the first canned beer ever. Yep. The OG. Fact checker. There's a 12-ounce. That's ounce, awesome. 12 oh, cheers ounce. to that. Cheers to PBR. Absolutely. And <laughs> is, then, uh, was it, is it a Northwest beer, too, or no? 
Ah, oh, fuck. I didn't look that deep into it, but... I'll double check, but I'm yeah. pretty sure it's not. Okay. I know that uh, when I was working in Auburn, one of the uh, PBR like high ups has like a suite at the Emerald Downs horse track because he he let me use his chair his seats one time. So I don't know if that means anything, but um, Schlitz actually was the first to introduce the Tall Boy in 1956. No, so, it's a Milwaukee beer. Oh, word. Yeah, so PBR came in with the uh, 1935 12 ounce, and then 1956 Schlitz introduced the Tall Boy. Um, and then there's, yeah, there's always been that argument. Well, not always been the argument, but there, I'm, I'm proposing the argument, you know, what's a tall boy, what's a pounder, what's a, the horse cock. And I guess I lost that one with a 24 ounce tall boy. And hmm. we actually learned something on today's episode. Yeah. That'll be uh, the, the first and only time. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> get it out cherish, of the way. Get it out of the way early. Yeah. Listeners can now tune out of this episode because the rest will be tomfoolery. I, I promise. Yeah. So this is the first episode of Vinny's, uh, been on board with us so we're doing the actual recording time we usually do like sundays at noon and uh he was getting excited about drinking beer at noon on a sunday and i i'm drinking beer at 11 a.m on a sunday because i'm in alaska so (laughs) this is a this is a good old breakfast beer the old breakfast pbr yeah you got to be used to it by now though you just get turned Uh, on like sunday afternoon and then just the rest of the day is just you're just hammered yeah this is there's a Sounders soccer game airing right now anyway, so I'm typically drinking during those games, so I, don't, I, feel I, don't, like I would have been drinking anyways. I don't know Lord. what that is, but anyways. <laughs> oh, you know, oh, it's just a, a real man sport. Uh, American soccer. Oh, man the, origi- the original football. Uh, a butterfly flew by me. That's a yellow card, right, ref? I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm hurt. Oh, my LeBron God, does the same I'm thing hurt. and he drives the lane. It's uh, all for the tactical foul. There's fucking <laughs> giants in the paint. Like fouling him at least. Uh, anyways, right. anyways, anyways. All right, so that's our beer. Uh, wh- what do you think, Jr.? Have you had Heineken before, or is that, is that why you went to Heineken, or, or what was the choice? Was I the honestly picked Heineken because it was on sale. Um, <laughs> <It's> honest. <laughs> no, that's a uh, great I didn't reason. Really want to spend yeah. you know more than a couple bucks on on a uh, on a beer that I was going to sip. Um, I picked Heineken. I tried to, honestly. I tried to pick something that was like Europe based because uh, the boys butcher. Is his character is from Billy? You know, the, yeah, is from the uh, the European side, and so I, I didn't have anything at Hagen. They had Hagen didn't have a lot of tall boys. They had a lot of uh, local brewery stuff, but not a lot of like tall, you know, domestic beer, imported beer. And yeah. um, Heineken was kind of the only thing that stood out. I mean, they had some Mexican beer, but I, you know, so I just tried to pick something over there, and I picked Heineken. And I I've, I don't think I've ever had Heineken before. I've heard of Heineken, obviously. Well, what are your thoughts? Uh, let me taste it. Yeah, bro. Ooh, that get that, get that sound bite. He was oh, trying to get I away with it. not cracking it open. Oh, I was not. Don't don't play that game. <laughs> it's so that big. It looks so big. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's, so it's your big. fucking forearm right there. Wait, let me let me let me two fist it. He's two hands. He's two hands. Double fisting is one hands. can with Jr. <laughs> let me two <laughs> double fists. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's phenomenal. Yo. I got to I got to get I got to get Spider-Man 2099 to help me hold it up. Hold on. There you go. There Your you forces go. combined. <laughs> you can drink one tall boy. Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. Good stuff, huh? You think it's disgusting? <laughs> what do you got I'm in the pile? I'm laughing what do you so got? hard I'm literally crying. What do you got? What do you got, Jay? What do you oh. think? Um I definitely got some uh, some wheat there. It does. It's more watery though than we're uh, than obviously we've been drinking too. When it comes to local breweries, they, they put some flavor in that stuff. And um, this is definitely more watery. Um, it's definitely a, a beer that you drink with with the buds over barbecue. You know, get some meat involved. It's not heavy, um, and uh, it's the original recipe. So. <laughs> Um, just reading, I'm just reading shit off I'm reading the can. The can. Um, it, it was brewed in Holland. It was great. You know, that's probably a great place to start. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, in, in uh, 1973, Gerard Heineken uh, founded it. So that was like over uh, 140 years ago. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and it's still His family owned. him just reading the can. Like, ra- he's finding random shit on the can. I can't um, wait till JR makes a fucking side podcast where he just breaks down beers by himself. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Just I just read labels. Too. Son of a bitch. Dude, that's going to be a <laughs> fucking <laughs> barn burner. On my table. Um, but yeah, it's. I won't buy it again. But yeah, it's, 
cool. <laughs> it's cool. All right. All right. I love it. Um, yeah, so the, the craft beer, they haven't really gotten to the tall boy uh, phase. They're, 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 they should, they, though. They were against it because they felt like it was uh, a big beer thing, what they call it, like a corporate beer. You know, oh. Corporate, oh, okay. like that's a, that's a, a big beer type. move. That's such yeah. a hipster like, business decision. But they've also, I was reading that they're uh, seeing how successful they are in the small markets, like a 7-Eleven, you know, like those little corner stores with the, the tall cans. Like, uh, people go to those when they just need a little quick hit and they're going to go to those the, the even more so. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Just a quick, quick hit. <laughs> quick hit, you know? Just a quick bullet, you know? Well, uh, my thing that is that, cop. like, tall boys, you can buy them one at a time. Yeah. Which is, yeah. like, really nice. I feel like I was just telling JR before we started recording, it's dope that, because sometimes, like, you just don't want a full pack of beer. You just want one. Especially if you're, like, a host of a beer podcast and you got to drink <laughs> one beer, and but you're not trying to get turned today. So tall boys are nice. You just grab one yeah. off the shelf and buy I it. I guess you do have that option, but you can also just, you know, not be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Rally up the troops. But, uh, Jordan moves to Alaska and just becomes, like, a grizzled man. Like, no nope. comes. No nope. Ben. No nope. Ben, son. Nope. Ben Grizzle, dog. <laughs> nope. That's not. That's not how it went. <laughs> that's not how it happened at all. Uh, Vinny, what are you doing with the Rainier? What? What? What's? What's special about Rainier to you, Vinny? Uh, let me, well, let me turn the can around so I can read it. Since JR's was so great. <laughs> God. No. God uh, like Zach agreed earlier, if you know Tacoma and you know the bar scene in Tacoma. Like, Rainier is always the go-to domestic beer. There's always deals on Rainier and stuff. But that's a local brewery. It's uh, Yakima, I'm pretty sure. It was the, where they grow the hops. And then I know that in Seattle, they had that big brewery that everybody loves with the giant lit-up R that you drive by right in, next to I-5. But Yeah, Soto. I mean, yeah, it's just a good, smooth domestic beer. You want something cheap, kind of like JR was saying, just hanging out with the bros, just wanting something cheap and good. We'll get that buzz going. Somebody's just fucking whomping down your road right now. <laughs> I know, dude. God damn it. God damn hooligans. Is that Blake and to, Zach out there racing? I need to be able to open the window really quickly so I can yell at them. <laughs> um, be the fucking old man with the... Get gun. off my yard! <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. All right, right on. Yeah, Rainier, uh, or otherwise known as Ronye, is, uh, you know... <laughs> I don't, I don't see Ronye anywhere on this can. I don't know. Uh, it's spelled the same. It's just how you pronounce it. You fuck. Um, so that's our beer breakdown. So, <laughs> that was real. I'm sorry. Uh, that, that's our beer breakdown, and then we're gonna go into the segment of of the boys. So let's go into our seven minutes. And, Wait, seven minutes are you gonna ask with, me? Can I break down the beer, Jordan? Seven minutes in heaven with Jr. Jordan. Uh, <laughs> it's Jordan with an I. Damn it, and you know that. Can I it, break down beer too, please? Can I play? All right, well, we talked about PBR, but if you have your own little little spin you want to put on it, absolutely. I'm sorry, sure. Zach. So as um, local breweries decided that they don't want to do tall boys because that's too corporate, in Seattle, we would call that hipster. Another hipster move is to have your PBR at the bar, order your tall boy PBR, and with that tall boy, order a shot of whiskey. Yep. So Standard. this is where's your, uh, where's your denim jacket as well? It's in my closet. It's, it's kind of warm in this room. You gotta put that on, it's, baby. It's uh, so I got some Johnny Walker Black Label, and nice. uh, oh shit, that's some good <laughs> shit. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna shoot it because I'm a I'm a piece because you're a goddamn champion. And I'm a goddamn champion on a Sunday. <laughs> Salute. Right. I'm so glad this is just on video. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, uh... That caught you off guard a little bit, it looked like. Nah, dude. Nah, that was... That was smooth. (laughs) Um, Oh, that's your smooth face? mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the PBR... To Dude. wash it down. I thought I was going to throw up for a second. <laughs> that's amazing. I almost threw up online. All right, so that's my beer breakdown. Thanks. Just for shooting Black play. Label. <laughs> oh, oh, man. God, that was disgusting. Thank you so much for pausing me so we can go to that. That was that made my fucking day. Um, all right, JR, so how about you break down uh, the boys for us? You know, who, who's behind it? What's the storyline? What we got? All right. Um, obviously, 
uh, the show's coming out. It's coming out on the 26th. Uh, Amazon Prime's the big uh, name behind it. Um, it's got some great actors in it. Um, and so uh, the book came out in 2006. It's been in uh, Garth Ennis, which if you listen to our podcast before or you're into comics or into dark TV shows or into brutal comics, um, you know that he wrote The Preacher. Um, you know that he wrote uh, Marvel Comics, uh, The Punisher. And um, it, those are big deal comics, right? Those are the top of the line. Those are very creative. Um, they're just... Um, I'm a, <clears throat> And if you know anything about Garth Ennis, uh, I'm going to read uh, a quick quote here from uh, Scott Dubner, which is, if you own the omnibus version of The Boys, um, he writes a little intro there. And he was like a, an editor for, you know... Um, for uh, Dynamite and uh, Wildstorm and all those. And he talked about describing, you know, if you know anything about Garth Ennis, you know that he writes the the filthiest and most absurdly funny scenes. And obviously, if you dig into this book, you really see some things that you're like, whoa, what the heck am I looking at? And um, you're like, I need to go to church today you know all those kinds of things so i feel like it it says something that he can that he writes things that like push that line yeah because i feel like people have been trying to push that line for so long that the line has gone farther and farther and farther away from like what maybe you could call like a morality center yeah And so you have to go real 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 far to push the line and he does and like that's dude's ballsy it is a ballsy fucking move and it's actually really important, particularly for this, because um, originally The Boys was published by Wildstorm. And while if Wildstorm is an old company, um, it got bought out by DC. So as soon as DC, uh, you know, sucked in uh, Wildstorm, they actually canceled The Boys, which was because it was too, mm. too graphic. And it was not it was actually kind of antagonizing of the DC superheroes. Right. Um, which we'll get into a little bit later. So there was, there's some, there's a reason why, um, and, and he actually talked about it a little bit, Garth, about how if it had stayed with Wallstorm and DC had took over, he goes, this would have died. He goes, it would have not become what it is. And he goes, I'm very happy that it actually got moved over to Dynamite and they took over and they got everything published. They actually can't, they actually canceled print on this. DC did Wallstorm. They had to. Mm. They had to get the you know uh, dynamite had to get the rights to even print the, the what first year six what year two thousand come out this came out in two thousand two the oh, first so six pretty, issues not even that long ago yeah well yeah. DC's still. DC soft we know that yeah and like, we bro. bro we've say that to we've, DC Black Label dog DC's <laughs> fucking soft dog what out of Marvel and DC you're saying DC is the soft one no I just think DC sucks and All they right. try to be cool and there's not so. I'm not gonna. Moving I'm gonna. On. I'm gonna let that move right, right by me. Just throwing out the bait, bro. Just, just yeah. I'm, just, I'm not taking it. <laughs> Take a bite. Take a bite. All right. Um. And so, obviously, with Garth Ennis, we, you know, he knows he's a award-winning um, author. He's won the the prestigious comic book uh, award, which is the Eisner Award. Um. And uh, he's he's an amazing writer. I mean, we've we love the preacher. The show was, you know, the first season was pretty good in that mm, one. Did we I love like the, the preacher? preacher. I like the preacher. Zach didn't like it because Zach's soft like DC. The preacher okay, was sorry. dope, dude. Uh, there goes that, cor- working that correlation into that conversation. Um, and then- and what's cool about it is that the, the preacher was produced by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. That's true. Um, Which is the same. There you same, go. Same tandem is hitting the boys. Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. So I, I mean, you guys know Seth Rogen. They made everything super bad. Pineapple Express. Uh, that tandem has made some fantastic fucking movies. And right. preacher was. I thought preacher was really great. Still I did is too, the first season, yeah. Second um, season was a little lame, but but that's what yeah, Zach it was a little liked. Softer, the second but, season. Um, and then the Arctic is uh, <laughs> Derek Dark. Robinson. Um, he's he's a little bit lesser known, a co-creator of uh, Trans Metropolitan, which is I've never read it. It's an, an indie book from Image, um, and he's been on some characters like Batman, Justice League. Uh, you know, he's drawn Wolverine, The Punisher. Um, and you know, he's been in the industry for twenty years, so um, it's a very very um, uh, uh, I wouldn't say stylistic style. You know, he's got some um, some things in there, but I definitely f- it's kind of a nitty grit kind of fun. It almost reminds me of of the preacher art by uh, Dillner, if if I remember that name right. And um, but just a little bit, you know, less um, stylistic with the faces. 
Um, what and I got from that, his that's a writer art and artist. Was just like he he definitely had that like mid two thousands kind of style. I don't know. There's a lot of comics that I've read that are superhero in that kind of era. And I felt like they all kind of had that similar, just like almost grittiness to it, but it still kept that stereotypical superhero style, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it kind of helped out with the art, the the book. Um, but basically, the the story goes with the boys is is the soups are 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 a are getting out of you know touch here. They're they're losing actually reality and they're becoming kind of like a villain, the superheroes. And the government needs to kind of put them in check. And so they kind of came up with this black op group called the boys. And that has you know, um, do you want to read off the the uh, character names? Yeah, but, but before right, you get so, into that, there's there's a line that, that kind of breaks down like what's happening to the superheroes that I, I took notes on. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and basically, it's when Billy Butcher, who's you able to get into him, he's uh, getting some paperwork on, on the people he's hunting down. And it uh, says, if you can dodge bullets, outrun tachyons, which are like particles that are faster than the speed of light, or swim across the sun, you've got better things to do than save the world for the 200th time. So it's basically saying, like, people are just getting fucking bored. Like, these heroes are, like, they're doing the same shit over and over again that they're just, like, they're human at the same time. So they're expanding their interests, you know? Right. Yeah, so it, it's kind of it's kind of a conflict, uh, you know, of, of interest a little bit because you have them trying to save people, but yet they're they're using it more of, like, a, a, for reputation or fame. And then knowing that their their back lives, you know, behind the story, they're kind of assholes. You know, they're they, in this storyline, superheroes are, are are really assholes, and they can care less mm-hmm. about the normal folk. And that's where the boys come in. And that's where uh, I just wrote down Butcher. I know his name is Billy, but um, there are some cool facts in this book. Originally, uh, the name for him was Savage, so that gives you kind of an indication of what uh, Ennis was looking for out of this character. He was looking for. Um, just a brutal, brutal character to deal with the superheroes. Um, he's, com- he's almost like an anti-villain, you know, almost, you know, just um, can give a holy fuck, is, as he says in, in the book throughout. And um, and uh, I, I, I love how uh, Ennis described him to how he wanted um, Robertson to, to draw him. And he's like, think of a guy with a dark, cruel smile. And so he had to come up with this guy who can just kind of scare you by with a little crick of his of his mouth, you know. He kind of reminds um, me of the Punisher. A little bit. And that's actually a, gr- a great thing to say because that's what's something that R- Robertson didn't want to portray too much. Like he's like a lot of the things was remind me of Frank Castle and mm. um, <clears throat> uh, another character he mentioned. But he's like, I, I was trying to not not to go in that direction but still have that brutality i wanted him to be different is basically what he said in the art and mm-hmm. i love that yeah i just i feel like there's that's exactly what i thought too when i first started reading it's like oh it's a fucking punisher he hunts superheroes like the same mm-hmm. thing. like it's very similar very similar storyline and i actually thought that the art on billy was very like misleading because <clears throat> some scenes like from the side he looks like you know ri- like just jacked and like dark and like chiseled and then it's up close scenes, he looks kind of like just like pudgy and like soft. So he almost has like two different sides of him when you see him in the art. At least that's how I kind of took away from it. Well, I think it, it makes him look more real, I feel like. You know, because like when you see someone that's just jacked and all bulky like that, then he's just one of the soups, you know? Like this guy isn't the soup. He's more of just like a normal dude like us. And he just wants to take him out because he hates him. Yeah, but with JR's description, like I just didn't get that the the dark yeah. like that can mm-hmm. scare you with the crook of his smile. Like I didn't, I didn't get that at all from him. Like his words, I did. Like, he says, I did a little fuck, bit. Fuck me, yeah. rigid. <laughs> it's like a fucking, yeah. <laughs> it's a jarring I feel like line. when you read that, it comes off with like an accent. Oh, yeah. fuck me, rigid. Immediately, yeah, yeah. Dude, the whole dialogue of the series, I felt like I was in Green Street Hooligans, like the way they just fucking talk. <laughs> and I oh, love it. Fuck off. I, I love that. I love that like slang. That like yeah. Kick him right in the arse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, that's sure. hilarious. All right, um, and then uh, we're gonna move on to uh, Wee Huey, um, which is a lot of fun facts about him. Actually, um, inspired by one of Ennis's um, old friends, um, he, he described him as innocent but tough term- determination, which was kind of like a contradiction. 
um but he wanted him to to have that like um going into this like basically going into a scenario i don't know what to do but uh you know i'm scared but i'll, I'll do whatever it takes kind of thing and I, I felt like i did get that throughout the book um and then obviously the the art robertson did um use simon Pegg as an inspiration and there's actually a forward in the book from simon Pegg and how he he said he should have been pissed about it but he, he couldn't you know and then and robertson even thought he's like i don't know if this guy's going to be a big deal or not you know in in life be a big you know famous person but why not draw him to look like him and obviously we all know the history of Simon Pegg. Yeah, um, he had so he had fun. space spaced was like his like British yeah, his series British that he produced, show, yeah. and then he got inspiration from that, so we started using him, and then all of a sudden Simon Pegg's in Shaun of the Dead, and just yeah. boom, got super hot, famous, hot fuzz, super famous. And when I look at the the comic, I don't get Simon Pegg. I get more of like a Bill you Burr. Don't? Really? No, like I get the, Simon Pegg a lot. I got Simon Pegg too. I, like I can see buzz, Bill Burr too, though. I can see Bill Burr too. Yeah, I get a lot of Bill Burr from it. Like his 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 body language is more Simon Pegg because Bill Burr is fucking just like hardcore Boston. But like, I don't know. He just like with the buzz cut and the goatee. I just I didn't see, I didn't see him. But I definitely got him from his person. I, I think it's just yeah. certain panels. Like there's some panels where it's like, yeah, he's too badass to be Simon Pegg. But then there's other panels where you're like, damn, that's definitely Simon Pegg. I yeah. I would say that that character is the bar for the audience, for sure. And all of this, like, madness with the soups and then Billy, like, his brutality. And it's a really crazy world. I feel like that character was written for, to measure, for the audience to relate to. to yeah, and they use into. him. They use him to kind of give an idea of why, like, of the dynamic between humans and soups. Like, like in every movie, every comic, you see the the superheroes are these, like, valiant, like, moral compass, like, just, like, perfect human beings and then in the comic he's it's showing uh huey fall in love with this girl and she says she loves him and they kiss and they're at, like a carnival and they're like holding hands and all of a sudden this fucking blur shoots by and then he's just holding her arms and her <laughs> body is just a fucking like splat on a brick Scary. wall <laughs> Scary. yeah yeah it's like oh fuck this is the world that we're that we're diving into here yeah Scary. So. And uh, they're actually, and if you watch the boys, the trailer, you'll see that kind of, they change it a little bit, but um, you kind of see the, you know, that happen in the, in, in the movie, except for it, it, except for in the book, it's a, it's a villain that gets slammed into her, into a brick wall. And, th but in the, in the show, it looks like uh, a train would just kind of ran through her and disintegrated her. Mm, yeah. I, I didn't notice that thing. until you just said it. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I'm here, Vinny. Um, <laughs> the expert uh, yeah and um so yeah i think that that's pretty cool i didn't know that uh vinnie had mentioned it in our feed and i'm like what the fuck is he talking about i mean it looks like simon Pegg, but then i go to the mm -hmm. point I'm like oh yeah he mentioned it you know yeah. uh i like how so that whole that first cool. page is from simon Pegg, and he's talking about yeah. you know him reading the comic himself and whatnot yeah right in the yeah, omnibus sure. it's at the end uh that whole intro um but um, and then we're going to move on to Mother's Milk. Now, there's not a lot of info on Mother's Milk. Um, oh, God, it, that name just makes me, like, cringe. Was this a <laughs> French guy? No, no, this no, is no, this black the, dude. Big, oh, yeah, with okay. the glasses and the beard and the short crew cut hair. He looks like Blade. Yeah. No, he, he does, does look like Blade. not. Oh, he looks like a buff Blade, though. I, I agree with he's that. He's yoked. Uh, like, he's way bigger than Blade. But, Bro, uh, tell that to Wesley Snipes' face, dog. <laughs> yeah, see what he says. And... Um, and um but anyway so he uh dk metcalf kind of a... should play the next blade <laughs> uh, would he's fit. not fast enough if you can be him in a race he's <laughs> definitely not fast <laughs> enough okay vampires sorry. will catch him right That's off the fucking bat um <laughs> i would say that he's kind of like the um the conscience of the group a little bit you know he's kind of i couldn't find any like details other than wikipedia and i don't try to look at wikipedia that much but um he's kind of like the conscience you know he he understands what they have to do. Um, he loves cleanliness. We see him throughout the book, like, have to have things done a certain way. Things have to be clean. Um, but, you know, he's kind of, he's, and he's definitely muscle, you know, definitely a powerful dude uh, for sure. Um, but that's all I got for Mother's Milk. I really, you know, there wasn't What's really too the much. fucking name? Like, where he's, is Mother's he's Milk? He's very mysterious from? in the beginning. Yeah. Like, there's not much other than he's the right hand man. Yeah. So, I don't know, just, we'll see how it goes with him down the story. I'm just going to keep reading to figure out where he got that name. 
sure. Keep Zach, going. you went on a little deeper. Do you know why his name is Mother's Milk? I don't. Damn. Damn. Jesus. <laughs> Just Mother's Milk. I, got, I, I went through. Well, I went through vol or um comic book forty five, and you guys went through comic book six, right? I got to like yeah, seven I went to or eight. eight. Yeah. 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 I st and I still don't know why he's yeah. called Mother's Milk. Yeah. There's so much. I mean, there's so much, but um, That's we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll let Vinny. You know, he's our background guy. He'll figure out what's going on. Um, and then let yeah. us know when it's like doesn't even matter anymore. Um, and then um, the female, which was just a rant. You know, I thought, what the heck is a female? Like, th and that's her name. He wanted to have – Guinness wanted to have someone just very brutal. And he actually didn't want a sexy, sexy girl. He wanted like this, you know, just nasty, ragtag hair. Um, it was uh, Robertson who, who designed her to be um, Asian. And Guinness loved that. Um, but at first he was drawing her to be more of the normal type of comic book girl. And, and Guinness is like, no, we need her to be like fucked up. Basically, we need her to be where you see her. You, you're you like something's wrong with her. And she kind of reminds me of um, that one horror movie, you know, from Japan. Oh, The Ring or, yeah. or Grudge. The Ring or Grudge. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was thinking she somewhere around that. Grudge. That's what I was thinking, uh, too. And um obviously she, i think she's the most brutal one i mean she's ripping skin off people's faces and throwing them against windows and um just bloodthirsty and she's quiet she doesn't talk she doesn't talk because what her tongue got ripped out or cut out or something um and she just seems pretty brutal so she's fucking ruthless yeah yeah I, ruthless. I, the scene where she's introduced like she's at the doorstep like knocking on a door of like some crack yeah, house yeah. or something and then the guys are like there's a fucking girl outside. What, is she cute? Like, how about you show her your dick and, like, fucking tell her to suck it or something? And then she just, like, breaks in the room and fucking you see a face just hit the wind, like, the window. Like, <laughs> like it's a, just awesome. Like a pizza pie. <laughs> yeah. It's just like. <laughs> She's like, damn. Yeah. I yeah, thought the, the tone pretty cool. is just, the tone of the book is set, like, from the get-go. You have the first opening panel. You have, like, a, like a Captain America-looking hero getting just curb stomped. And then, like, the first opening line is, like, I'll have you, you fucking cunt, by like yeah. Billy Butcher. It's like, all right, this is where uh, we're at. See you yeah. next Tuesday. All right, we're uh, getting see in you next there. Tuesday. It's going to be dark. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening. By the way, I found out why Mother's Milk is called Mother's Milk. Do you guys oh, care? Oh, yeah. Yes. You, you found Please it before God. me. God, you trying to take my job? Dude. <laughs> I, just, I just Googled it. <laughs> He's um, like, you Googled it. Job. So it has been revealed that Mother's Milk's name is related to the fact that due to the compound V in his body, so Mother's Milk is the only one that was born with the superpower. Ah. You know how, like, everybody else had to have, like, the compound, the compound v, v, like, injected into them yep. to mm -hmm. mutate their DNA? We he was we'll get into. Let's yeah, we'll get compound into. V really quick. Uh, compound V okay. was created by the Nazis, um, and it was to help, you know, have superheroes like Captain America but it's been um, introduced into the gene pool, so now there's people who are born with it instead of injected by it. And there's very um, there's various ways to have it. You can smoke it by cocaine. Obviously, in the scene where the girl, uh, the teenage Nicks were doing that to have sex with them so they don't get destroyed. And then obviously the way that uh, Louis Hugh got it, or Wee Huey got it, <laughs> Wee, uh, Wee Huey got it by injection um, in in certain amounts, so they don't have it permanently. Um, they're not permanently super super powered. So back to you. Right. So so he was born with it. He's the only one that was born with it. So um, it has been revealed that Mother's Milk's name is related to the fact that uh, due to the compound V in his body, he had to continue nursing from his mother to an advanced age and possibly continues nursing to this day. When he was a child, <laughs> his mother tried to wean him multiple times, but he got progressively <laughs> sicker and weaker each time until his heart stopped the last time she tried. Whoa. So, so what, what happens when his mom dies? What I was reading is that then he dies, I guess. It's, it's similar. Fuck. But it's not necessarily that he was born with it. It says that his mother worked at a factory that experimented with compound V. And so she had it and it was somehow in her breast milk. And so like that was how he got it was through the breast milk. But same thing, like he had he couldn't leave, you know, that breast milk. Either way, he's getting it from his mama's titty. Yeah, dude, that is that's that a, is funny. It's like a name that's like right that's there so weird. in front of you, and you just wouldn't expect it. But yeah, that's a reliance. That's a hell of a reliance on your mom. Yeah, bro. Like, so goddamn. Is, is that a creative thing, or like, how do you view this, Z? Like, do you view that as being creative? Like, I mean, because I would have never thought of that. Um, like, how do you how do you view that? I don't know. I mean. 
I kind of think this writer is like a sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in general. Like you yeah. can call it creativity, sure, because it is creative. But I also think that a lot of his like a lot of his kind of best moments are shock value. And I think that's like a cheap thrill. Like to be honest with you, I think that's why I didn't love the preacher. This 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 story was fine. I mean, it it's, it wasn't bad, but I feel like I'm gonna shock you. Ooh, I'm gonna do something real dark. Like to me, it's like it's not as substantial as like other ways to to draw up a narrative. But I think you guys knew that. I mean, I'm not. I'm the same guy. Like this is the same dude as that did preacher. I didn't like that that much. So yeah, I don't think that should come as a much of a surprise. I mean, I. Yeah. To me, it's like I feel like it's uh, sh- ooh, shocking, you know. But yeah, I don't know. It just or he just really a doesn't have fuck. staying power to me. <laughs> and that's who I he mean, is. I, I feel like the images are super shocking, but there's still some creative writing into this. It's creative, sure. It's it, I'm not saying that he's not creative. I mean, the dude is creative. Mother's Milk is creative. I mean, most of like the, he he definitely has creative ideas and things. But I just feel like his whole angle is trying to shock you. And I just, I feel like that's not like a, that's like an easy way to get oohs and ahs instead of like writing like a really complex, interesting narrative. Very good. Yeah. Cool. It's like sex sells. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's, it's like if you, if you are a man or female and you like put your body on online or something like that, like you're probably going to get more people to like it and comment on it so on and so forth because sex sells. That's just, that's always what it's been. Does that necessarily mean that, I mean, you should do it all the time? Like, I, I mean, sure, I, I live your life. But for me as a creator, I just feel like there's other ways to, to bring value. And those are the ways that are more interesting to me because they're kind of harder. That's what that's all I'm saying. Yep. Yep. All right. Cool. Um, and then lastly is the uh, the Frenchman. There's got to be five people in the unit at all times. Um, the Frenchman is uh just uh, they call them the muscle you know the 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 female the frenchman mother's milk they were the muscle of the group um and again just describing him uh guinness wanted robertson to have someone who was calm when he was calm but then like crazy when he was crazy like it was just from like one end of the spectrum to the other there was like no middle ground and then he talked about trying to draw that and trying to uh portray that in his in his art but um, and that's basically what the Frenchman was. You know, he was just another guy who, like, when it's time to go crazy. I remember growing up, and there was a bunch of us who were like, okay, let's, you know, let's handle it, like, in a fist fight or something. We're just, let's handle this. But there was always that guy, and we're like, dude, do not kick that door down. Do not punch a hole in that wall. Do not throw that raw. And every fucking time, he would go there and kick that fucking door down. And we're like, now we like gotta Like, he would leave. take it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. we're like, dude, it's like, dude, come a- on. Yeah. And that's exactly who I thought who the Frenchman was. And it's like, thanks for ruining the party, but that's what you're here for, I guess. Whatever. But, uh, <laughs> to ruin the party. Yeah, his introduction um, at the tea sh- shop or whatever that was, the yeah, cafe was great. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but that's that's the that's the the boys. That's the five. That's who we'll be seeing in the in the, um, on a TV show. So. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of different. I, I, I usually I was thinking when I read the first when I read through this first I was I was a little bit disappointed in the um, the boys like the characters and then I rethought about it and I I do I do appreciate you know the differences between the the five I just I just I don't feel like I really understand a whole lot of them like I didn't know Mother's Milk I didn't know like why his name was that I don't really understand the Frenchman that much and. Uh, like the woman, like there's just like zero background on her. And it was basically the volume one was kind of like an origin story, right? But the only people, the only reason I know, the only people I know why they fight the soups, I know why Billy fights the soups and because yep. his wife was raped by a soup and then she died giving birth to it. And then Huey, his girl was taken away from him because of a soup. But other than that, I don't know the other three. Do you, like, do you know why the other three are so vengeful against the soups or... You know, I, I think it's more down the storyline. And I think that's yeah. I think this is why it's going to make a great TV show because not everything is up front. And sometimes they have to change this, the TV show to make it longer, right? To, ex, to ex, you know, this is obviously very well. 
Um, and I feel like this is meant for TV, even though he probably didn't mean to draw it for TV or write it for TV. But I think a lot of these characters we're going to see down the line, we're going to see a lot of like, you know, the, the soups and who they really are down the line. Like there wasn't a lot of about the seven in there. You know what I mean? Other than who they were and some past members and a hint of what happened to past members and uh, past things. And um, and I'll uh, tell you one thing about the seven, though. This writer knows how to make a villain. That's yeah. Very true. Like, I'll say that off top. This guy knows how to make a villain. Like, right. this dude makes these guys so vile and despicable. Like, the level of despicable and vile that those characters are, almost instantly when you meet them. Let's go into why. Like, oh, <laughs> like, look at, look at <sighs> his face. He's like, let's do why. Um, do you want me to name him really quick? Oh, yes, please. Let's name him. Um, the Seven, which is the, the, the most powerful group. There's a bunch of groups in this. They're basically the Avengers. Teams. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's Holander, Homelander, A-Train, uh, Queen Maeve, uh, Black Noor, The Deep, uh, Jack from Jupiter, and Starlight is the new addition, which is um, very, very graphic in how she was introduced. Um, and initiation's uh, rough for the. Seven, yeah, I'll let I'll let Jordan do that least. part because uh, he likes those things. Um, and then uh, four more. Uh, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, and then yeah. watch those things. Uh, 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 <laughs> and then um, there's a background story going on, a subplot going on about uh, Lant Lighter and previous. Um, uh, encounters with the seven and the boys and um some death going on there some grandkids you know some fears so uh, but that's the seven um so uh jordan what happens to starlight well so this <laughs> so the seven yeah are the avengers and then there's two like other like sub super there's all ki- and- yeah there's like sub 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 teams there i mean yeah, you've got so- um the young americans the teenage nicks which is who they go after right away um, and then they got a team called the Payback, and then the G-Men, G-Men this, G-Men that, G-Men blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so the, the Teenage Kicks are who the boys are going after to kind of like make a statement. And right. then the Young Americans are where Starlight came from, which is kind of like the uh, the moral like young group. Like they have youth group meetings that are very religious, like they... They're like Starlight, she she's proven herself, so she's welcomed into the Seven, and uh, she's talking about how she's like, she's in in love with the drummer boy who's like the leader of the Young Americans, and like they're waiting for marriage to like have sex, and like, <laughs> and uh, Homelander is like the fucking leader of the Avengers, and he's basically Superman, this Captain America, Superman guy, blonde hair, just huge cape, and just like walking her through the whole fortress, and like. She's she's in awe, right? This is her like her life, her dream. She's always wanted to be a part of the seven because they they are the ultimate. Like that's the, that's that's the peak right there. And he's just like taking it in stride. Like yeah, you're right. And like showing her like all the rooms. And she's like, so you got a you got a love interest back home? She's like, yeah, you know the drummer boy. And uh, you know, but we're we're saving ourselves. And he's like, oh, that's great. And she's like, yeah, I know, I really love. Him. He goes, yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's great and, and uh it's yeah starlight's this little like blonde annie uh and uh he, he's just like talking to her and she's just like uh he's he's basically an it's initiation and so he sits her down and he's like all right well there's just one final test you have to to um complete and she goes and she smiles what's that and he just drops his pants he goes suck it and <laughs> it just shows his fucking ass and it's just like Jesus. All right. And like if you it, it's it's a jarring moment and this is like, you know, Garth's his forte, you know. He he he's got that shock value. But it gets even better because uh she's caught off guard. She's freaking out. Goes, "You're the homelander. You're you're the leader of the seven. You're supposed to be glorious and majestic." And he's like, "Yeah." And then A Train and Black Noir come around the corner. And she goes, "Oh, thank God. A Train Black Noir, you're here. You can't. You'll never believe what's happening. And then all of a sudden, they just start unzipping their pants, and they're walking up to her. And now she's surrounded by three, <laughs> three dudes' dicks, and it's like Jesus Christ. And then this line is what I wrote down. She's she's like she's just blown away. Her dreams are crushed. She's got three dudes' dicks in her face, and she goes, "You're Earth's most mighty. You bring justice to all. You avenge the innocent. You're the seven. And then her winner goes, "Yeah, and we'd like to get our dicks sucked." <laughs> and it's just fucking. God. <laughs> that is that's basically the introduction to the seven. And I tell you, man, reading through that, you're just like, 
Oh, 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 fuck these guys so bad. Dude, these guys are terrible. Just but the worst. I, I went I went deep. I went deeper into the story and I can like really drop some bombs on you guys if you want me to. All right, so are we going I mean, the but the, but that's like a legitimate question. I'm asking I mean, you guys are basically the listeners at this point cuz I know some shit that you don't know and I know some shit that the listeners probably don't know. And oh, I can either oh, oh, like oh, like so. in the like deep deep future like so you're the talking whole like the whole thing you're talking i can like either spoilers. drop these bombs now or i can keep them and let's hold can... off on the bombs maybe right. after we do our reaction to the series people can decide um but yeah let's hold off on any spoilers deep down because people are going to want to watch the show all right yeah I don't, if it's going to spoil the show i don't want to watch it i don't want to hear you say it. it's definitely going to do that yeah. it's like yeah. basically the entire series like how it oh, okay ends. yeah let's wait then yeah, yeah. let's, wait. let's hold right. off on that but yeah so that's that's how you meet the seven and imagine like the Avengers, but with zero moral compass and just down to fuck like everything that moves. Like, <laughs> like that's basically what these shitheads are. Yeah. And it, it, it brings like light to, you know, a lot of ideas. And, and, you know, we always have a segment with Zach where we talk about the cultural references. Um, we call it beneath the ink and he goes like kind of the underlying theme of, of, of what the story is trying to say. Um, and Zach, do you have anything you want to talk about with that, with like what what this might correlate to? Well, I just think it talks about power. Like, I think there's like this, um, there's a uh, kind of trope in society. Well, I mean, it, there's a cliche first of all before we even get into that that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I think that there's a lot of things going on right now with like the Me Too movement and. Um, these like really rich guys are getting like taken down in court because they've been just doing terrible shit and they're getting Harvey called Weinstein out on it. And yeah, Louis yeah. C.K. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, Harvey. Yeah, there's there's one right now. Uh, anyway, I forgot this guy's name, but I guess he was like running a human sex trafficking ring, and he's Jesus. like Donald Trump's like Best main. Buddy. I don't know. Anyway, anyway. Um. So, but here's the thing. I think that like. It's there's there's a there's a line in the book and I wish I would have written it down, but it says something about like this is what happens in the movies after the screen po- like freezes, like the yeah. heroes save the day yeah. and they they you know defeat the villain and all this stuff and then the screen freezes and they pose and then the credits roll, right? Well, what we're watching now is what's happening in their lives after as those credits are rolling. Like this is what happens next, right? And I think that um. The seven and all the other soups represent like power. I mean, they're 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 absolutely powerful. They, they they there's no consequences for them ever, and with no consequences, they start to get bored, and with their boredom, they start to like push that line, similar to how that the writer just tries to push the line, and then they become terrible, terrible fucking human beings because they lack consequence. Yeah, there you um, go. Absolutely. So that's kind of like the the the. That's what I saw. That's what do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. I think that, you know, the whole Spider Man spiel with great power comes great responsibility. There's just zero responsibility. <laughs> I mean, they just don't fucking like, they don't hold themselves to it. Nobody else holds themselves to it. They mentioned that the CIA is like afraid of them. Like, uh, Billy talks about the um, death expect- expectancy of like a hostage situation and like they're like graded on it when it comes to like the CIA. And, like, if it's, like, 20% or less, they pass. Right. But with the uh, soups, it's 60% or less. And they don't fucking push that envelope or, like, try and make it equal because they're afraid of them. Like, they don't want to, like, they don't want to, there's nothing they can do. They're more powerful than them. Like, if if they're more powerful than the military. Right, exactly. What are you going to do? So there's literally nobody or nothing that can hold them in check. Exactly. There's no consequence for them. And and so, in a lot of a lot of hero uh, origins, like it's always like the 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 right person that receives the power. Like it's always like the right. most noble or like the most right. um, valiant or whatever. And then in this scenario, it's just like random fucking luck, and you're gonna have some bad apples out there that have powers, and yeah. basically they're villains that are. Well, I I also felt that the story had a, like when even when we watch those good apples like the noble ones like captain america and iron man there's a lot of times when they're fighting in the movies and stuff when they are just fucking destroying the city like the <laughs> yeah. city is getting wrecked like yeah. but they never show any innocent people dying they never show any of that but you just have to 
kind of assume like people are dying today you know what i'm saying like this if the building comes down people are gonna die and i so i think that there's like this dichotomy right like there's sure they're bad apples but over time they've done so much effed up stuff even trying to save people that that it might like kind of mess with them like thinking back to like oh my gosh like you know i hear the story about the, this person's sister that died in this you know building being brought down on them so on and so forth and i feel like that's that's got a way heavy on your conscience like i think that it's 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 a mix of both like even good even good people might do bad things under the same circumstance like yeah. how you well that's been know. a that's been a very uh common storyline in in the the Infinity Saga, because I mean, like with the whole Age of Ultron thing, where they lifted the entire like area and like, collapsed it, like that's that was like that was the whole reason for Civil War was the um, General Zemo or whatever his family died in that, and he created this like vengeance towards Iron Man and Cap and built mm-hmm. this this feud. Like that does happen. I think it just depends on the um, you know strength of of mind and the integrity of the individual that like they know that yes casualties do happen for the good um and you just got to kind of like convince yourself that you're doing the right thing even when bad things happen and some people don't have that mental fortitude so so let me ask you this on a on on some deep shit on some real shit bro oh god what 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 <laughs> can go ahead are you asking me to go ahead or somebody else no you yeah. oh does power corrupt absolutely like is it is it is it integrity that keeps somebody on the right side of the moral compass, or is it consequence? Oh, Jesus, um, I'm four tallies deep at eleven thirty a.m. Um, that's for everybody too. Like I'm like let's. I mean, that's my question. That's my question. I think it depends on the person. I don't think you can say that in a general... You can have a general aspect, but there are individual outliers. Like, I think that even the most powerful in the, in the right hands can make the best decisions. Yeah. Um, even but, if they lack consequence, you think they would still land well, that, on the right side of that mor- de- morality? That dep- Like, that's the whole Invisible Man argument, right? Like, the reason the Invisible Man was always so dark in the um, right. Story of Gentlemen is because he had zero consequence. And right, was a exactly. fucking shit piece of it you're right like, yeah. yeah terrible but i don't think that everybody would go that route i don't think that every single person that receives that ability would go that route so uh, it's tough i think that so you think it's integrity then i think it's in- i think there is integrity in individuals but for the grand scheme of people i would say yes consequence yeah. in, in just in general it's it's kind of like um like like sports athletes you know what i mean like who can handle the money and who can't handle the money right like most nfl players who who get Mm. money right away spend it because they never had it and they didn't understand how to take care of it and i think it's it's a it's a lesson to be learned it's a skill to be had it's a skill to be built to be a good person it's not you know we're we're blank pages as children right and our parents are the ones that kind of guide us in that in that direction and hopefully you have that as an outlier and hope and sometimes people don't need that sometimes people are just have that um in them and uh and i go back to every time i, I hear this conversation i go back to that sports thing and I, I hear like the numbers for nfl players who go broke or bankrupt after the nfl and have to get into like insurance right. or have to get into some other kind of job because they just did not know how to have handle that responsibility of millions and mm-hmm. millions of dollars they wanted to have fun and I think at a point in life you work so hard for something and um, or or not like, you know, I always I've been taught something about, uh, you know, the spectrum of life. You know, you, you have people like zeros right in the middle. Right. But most people, when they're they're raised, they usually start off over here, you know, a little bit below zero and they have to earn their way. And the people who've earned their way have usually, you know, understand how it works. But when sometimes when you give someone something over above the zero they don't understand how to earn it and so they take advantage of it so there's there's all kinds of, hmm. of things that can ha- that can happen to you to take those um responsibilities for granted and say you know what i'm i'm rich now who fucking cares like mm. you know what i'm gonna hit the, if i hit this guy with my car because i've been drinking all night or i've you know or i'm you know this um you know just random violence that happens there it's because people don't think about you know anything they think about 
themselves and obviously right. the soups here are 100 percent thinking about themselves and they don't see the consequences like i think which is really important why they brought up why by butcher is doing what he's doing and obviously right in the beginning of the book where you know we huey the consequences of having superpowers and then them not even realizing what they're doing and they don't care about it is is like i feel like the moral of the story and um it's a it's a tough one to swallow and in this one it's very very graphic but we've seen it before i mean we've seen it in the mm. batman versus superman movie and you know we've seen it you know in infinity war a little bit of uh that in the Watchmen, you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah pretty strong I'm I'm much more pessimistic than than my co-hosts on the show. <laughs> yeah, that's what this conversation has has shown me. I love your guys' answers. I think it's really interesting, and I hope the listeners loved it too. But I am much more pessimistic than you guys. So I think go, it's consequence, man. Go on, yeah. I think it's consequence. I think that I think that if you if people are ever introduced into a world where there is no consequence, they lack consequence completely. They will almost always slide to the negative side of morality. I think that, of course, there's outliers. I think that integrity, everybody has different mor morality, like the moral compass and values. But even in your example with the, with professional athletes, they have consequences. They are not in a consequence less situation. I mean, yes, there's there's they're in a you know they're super rich and so on and so forth. But if they kill somebody, they're going to go to jail. If they spend all their money, they're going to be broke. Like those are consequences. But if you put somebody in a position where that that isn't the that doesn't exist, I, I think almost always they're going to become corrupt. See, I I don't disagree with you, and that's why I was saying there are outliers. But in the general scheme of things, yes, I think that would be the case because yeah. people are people are mentally weak in general. I yeah. would say. I'm gonna and that's set me. Fuck, I wouldn't. Fucked up. I'm definitely no, you, gonna disagree. A, I do believe in. You'd be in Homelander. Good. I do believe it. No, I, dude. I, I believe in. <laughs> Absolutely not. I believe in the superheroists of in all of us, and I do believe that. Um, I always refer things back to art because art it art's a process, right? And if I do, you know, if I whatever decision I make and choice I make, it's gonna guide me in a way that um, can either have a great painting or a bad painting. And I think people when they see choices out there. You know, these soups have choices and they just they don't care. But you, if you're taught right and you're and you're trained right and you have the ability. I mean, the guys are using compound V, the boys here uh, uh, as as a, you know, equalizer. Right. They're using. Yeah. It. And they're basically they're not, doing the drug to even be able right. to compete. But they're not. Yeah. They could abuse it more. And maybe they do down the line. But in the first ex issues, they could abuse it. In fact, Wee Huey almost shit his pants and was so pissed about having yep. that power that he did not want to... He almost quit. He almost yeah, quit. He want it. And I, I yeah. think that person is out there, for sure. You know, I feel like, yeah, it'd be fun to have superpowers, but am I going to change my life that I've built because of it? You know? Um, I came from a very, very, like, my parents, my parents worked really hard to provide, but it wasn't, like, the most money ever. You know, power went out all the time, and um, mac and cheese and hot dogs were the meal of the of Dude, that the was night. my favorite. Yeah. Hot favorite dizzles. Meal. Get some yeah. get some chili on that, you know, mix it all up. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Put some cheese on that yeah. chili, yeah, boy, bro. You know, bro, so you melt that cheese excited. in the microwave. Get me yeah. all excited. Yeah. Um, mm. I do feel... Um, that 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 you know my parents taught me something great about hard work and respect right and i do feel that some people weren't as lucky as me to have both my parents in them but there is someone in their life and hopefully they do have it you know but if they don't it's definitely got to be who you are as personality there's no there's a reason there's 200 serial killers out in the world today not everybody's a serial killer though i mean they still have the same amount of of um things that we have and opportunities that we have but they just choose to do, do they have that a nastiness in them i think and i think you choose to be that at times ladies and gentlemen jr is the best of us <laughs> just the fucking sweetest god damn it. i want to pinch he, your cheeks he's the best of us he's captain best, america bro i he's wear the cap. best tights to show off the oh man all right well that he was doesn't a, have the best butt though so. that was a I great do dive, squats. i'm working on it getting up that was, that was, <laughs> a, that was a fun in the mail soon <laughs> That was a great dive, uh, you know, behind the pages. I, I think that 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 we can all relate to that. And and just one one fun little note about NFL players that 
brought it up. It has nothing to do with it. But my uh, one of my coworkers played for the Cardinals when they went to the uh, Super Bowl back in the day. Uh, was was not Zach. We're not coworkers. And um, we, are, we work me, on this show together. I mean, bro. we are. We oh, are. Working, and you were at Red Robin I, together, right? I see, oh, if we were coworkers, dude. Don't get me started. Plot bro. twist. Oh. This motherfucker is like, hey, it was me. I, I put my two weeks in. So I'm going back to school, and he goes, hey, just fucking don't show up the last day. Let's go to Seattle and get drunk. And I'm like, dude, it's my last day of my two weeks. I'm not gonna be that asshole. He goes, no, fuck it. Just, just don't go. So I don't show up. We go to Seattle. Have a great time. I get all these voicemails from Red Robin. Like, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And then Zach goes the next day. He's like, yeah, you have no idea what happened. You just didn't fucking show up. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a fucking asshole. I'm That's never. That's a true story. Never done that, that in my two weeks. Story. Oh, I didn't show up my fucking last. Oh. Zach and no consequences. <laughs> yeah. Zach and consequences. Pessimist. Uh, but no, uh, this guy, he, uh, he played for the Cardinals, and they had the NFC Championship rings, and so they get sized for their rings, right? And just go into like, how, they can, like, how they handle money and like, what they're doing. Like, he said that all the linemen would break their fingers, because uh, it's postseason, right? So it's like no, no games or anything. They'd break their fingers before they got ring sizes, so they'd be all swollen, and the rings would be bigger, and then they would just sell the rings. So they would, they would swell their fingers up intentionally just to get a bigger band, and then so they could sell it for more. Wow. Wow. It's fucking crazy, right? That's yeah. Nice. It's a Super Bowl that's, ring. That's Why wouldn't you just keep it forever? No, it's NFC Championship because they oh. lost Super Bowl. But but still, like, they need money, bro. That's nuts. That's the thing. Yeah. That's 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 the crazy crazy other side of it. Damn. So, um, I always love <laughs> that story. That's dark, dude. That's I know. A, that's, <laughs> that's dark. Right? Um, all right, so that's in, that's beneath the ink, man. I feel like we all we we dove deep there. That was fun. Uh let's let's uh give our final thoughts. So um Hate or love it? That's 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 kind of the, the basis here. Do you, do you think if you had to pick one or the other, you can't say it was okay or you like it, but did you hate it or did you love it? Um, what do you think, Z? Oh, hate it. Okay. Uh, if I, if, 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 if you're forcing me to choose between those two extremes, like tr- actually, in all actuality, I did not hate it. Right. But if I'm, fo- I fo- if you're gonna put me in that corner and I have to pick one or the other, I'm hate closer it to hating it than loving it. So the underdogs I, I on top. It. All right. Why? Uh, I think I touched on this earlier, but I just I find shock value narratives to be cheap, cheap thrills. Like I I just I just think that they're not as good as. I mean, I do this. Like I I read stories and I like study storytelling and narratives and and why it was impactful and all, like these intricacies and um, I just feel like that's a cheap way to get it done i think it's it's it works it's successful but it's kind of like the easy card and so based on that that's why okay jr uh i loved it um it was i i mean i started i got a little late in the game to read it so i was really worried about um finding the information but i started on 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 wednesday night and i got through like the six the six you know issues pretty quick and i think it was because it was entertaining i took it for entertainment purposes i took it um i love the i mean the graphic stuff where i was like ooh, i had to show amber i'm like oh there's sex in this and then she goes oh yeah there that's you know like what the hell you know and um, <laughs> she's just like you know <laughs> what are you doing you, know? you turn that um, page and it's like blah in your face yeah and they Dude, actually yeah. do that on purpose by the way they talked about that in um and Guinness about how he wanted that shock value that Zach was talking about how where Butcher was having sex with the head of CIA, you know, and they wanted uh, the artist wanted to come up with a pose to, to show the the shock value a little bit. And um, but I, I loved it because it was thoroughly entertaining. I'm super excited for the show. I, I mean, I'm watching I watched the trailer a couple times, but. Um, I love the characters. I love what they're they're trying to do. I love that the superheroes are the bad guys in this. I mean, we're reading stories where their superheroes, yeah, you know, are are always the top guy. And um, so far, I've liked every character. I love the sub characters. I love the subplot to the characters. I love the comic book store guy, which is a little bit later um, in there. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, all. there's it's it's in issue seven, um, but I, I'm interested to finish this book really. It quickly i'm almost done with it already you know in, in four days and usually it takes me a little bit to do an omnibus like this you know 14 issues 
you know, two issues a day, usually about a week. So, um, but yeah, that's why I, I liked it. And I, and I love Ennis, I, you know, the more and more we read and the more things that we do, I love, I love when we find these writers who are not so mainstream and these artists who are not so mainstream, um, or at least weren't now they are obviously, uh, come up with great stories. So that is why I like it. I love it. Okay. Okay. So one hate, one love. I, I think I'm going to side on the side of love as well. And I don't think that, um, it's my favorite. I did like it though, in general. Um, I thought that it was, it's, I feel like when Zach says that it's just shock value, um, it's, it's kind of like demeaning the point. Like, yes, shock value is involved, but there is more to it than just the shock value. Like that is a part of it. But I think right. that the storyline is creative. I think that it is cool to see the world of superheroes flipped upside down and shown like the brutal underbelly of what could possibly happen in society. And this exposes that. And I think that it does have a good fucking relevance to current day life. Like when we think about the government, we think about Trump, we think about all these political figures in power and all the shit and all the scandals they get into and all the shit that goes behind closed doors. Like we only see what they, what they want us to see. And we still see shit, you know? Right. So like God knows what really happens behind closed doors. They even make a Bill Clinton reference when he's talking about like the girl starlight it was like, you're going to force yourself on me, force me to have sex with you. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nobody's forcing you. But if you want to be in the seven, then yeah. And he goes, and Bill Clinton would disagree that that's having sex, but still like he even says that. And so like, it's just like, it shows like, the like sim- similar league of disordered gentlemen with the invisible man it shows what mankind's capable of with ultimate power and zero consequence but it also has like a relevancy with the you know the pyramid of power in society um and i also like i think that it's on the other side of it i think that it's not as like i don't know i only read the first volume so hear me on that but like it's a lot of fucking it's a lot of drugs and it's very like there's one fight scene and there's very little like there is characters but there's very little development of them it's just like they're kind of thrown in there and you understand two of them did you hate it or love it i'm sorry i said i love it more than i hate it because i think that the storyline is great the idea is great but like i'm not like gung-ho about it i think that there's a lot of stuff that i unless uh, hopefully it develops more um but like the like the whole it's a lot of build up but with a lot like lack of depth you know it's a lot of just like people fucking people doing drugs and people being like cussing and saying cool shit but like like you don't get to understand the characters a lot and I'm you know I'm big on character development and I just didn't get a lot of that um, so yeah I love it but I think that there is a bright future for it and I'm excited I feel like you and I are both in the middle but we're just on opposite sides of that middle fence just just yeah just just a little bit off you don't like the shock value i think there's more to it than just shock value um but yeah we're not very far apart so that goes in the next segment you know let's let's rank it out of 10 zach where are you at uh i'll give it a 4.5 ouch 4.5 all right jr where you at uh i'm gonna go seven Seven? Yeah. Okay. That's solid. Yeah, I was going to say 7.5, so I ranked it higher than I guess than you would, so let's, uh, let me get my calculator up here because I can't do fucking math. So we got 4.5 <laughs> plus 7 plus 7.5. So overall, 6.3, which I think is... That seems good. Yeah, I think that's on right. par. Yeah, I think that's on par. Yeah, I, I think that it's got edge, it's got uniqueness to it, but there it's still lacking a little bit. There's some holes, and, and there is a lot of preacher shock value things that Zach's talking about. Preacher, um, and I'm I'm curious how the TV show is going to do it, like because like there's a lot of fucking, and I don't see Amazon series as like that kind of vibe. So I hope they go for it though. I That's the too. only way to do it, I think. Like I feel like if they try to like tone it down, then it's just going to further expose the holes in the story. Yeah. And I think that's going to be a mistake. Like, I think that they need to turn it all the way up. So they, they, you know, I mean, present to us in a show what the book was. That's that's what I want. I don't want to see no, like, you know, bullshit. I I ain't want no bullshit. (laughs) Yeah. Give me that real shit, bruh. Yeah. If you water it down, it's just going to because, like, I feel like if you water it down, you expose something that's not there. Like yeah. You expose, right. Exactly. Like, the gaps. Yeah. Right. So I, I completely. And that's agree. like that's kind of the perspective I'm coming from. Like I'm like, 
if you turned it down, like if you took the shock value out of it, what do we have left? And you have something with a ton of holes. That's what you have left. Like that's kind of like where I'm like what I saw, which is why I gave it 4.5. Yeah. I that's mean, fair. out of five stars, Amazon gives it 4.5. And this is 140 reviews. So that's high as fuck. It's high for consumer review on the Kindle app, which is what I read it on. And then um, it's mad high. So I, you would assume Amazon would stick true to the video once they try to film it or, you know, when we see I'm it. sure they will. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they will. I know it would just be such a I glaring mistake got not a couple to. Other comic I feel like they're not going to. They're not that dumb. No, no. Yeah, yeah. This okay. is going to be the beginning of the comic series of Amazon movies. Yeah, I'm series. It. I'm loving it. I'm excited about I'm it. I'm very it. excited about it. East of West, for us. baby. It's good for us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, all right. Well, that's that's the boys. Um, that's that's our opinion. That's our thoughts. You guys should go out and read it and catch the show on July twenty sixth. There's going to be what is it? Jr. Two episodes and then it an sounds like they're going to do two episodes on, on the Friday and then they'll probably drop one. That's how Amazon's done a couple of their shows. Uh, yeah, that's did, pretty regular. Uh, and so they're going to do an episode maybe per week, like normal TV probably. Cool, cool. Well, that seems to be the movement for uh, platforms in general. So I'm excited. Um, and then we'll go into plugs to close it out. And this is one of my favorite, uh, probably my favorite plugs episode ever because Zach's got some pretty cool news that he wants to plug out. What do we got, Z? So last week, um, we have been working on this for like a really long time for, I mean, almost two years now. Um, and essentially what we've created is we have created our own company. Um, it's called Oz, stands for R Zenith. Um, we went live this last week. It's a big, big deal. If there was champagne bottles here, we would be popping them. And we got um, tall boys. Yeah, we got tall, tall boys. <laughs> everybody, everybody, drink to Oz. Oz is live. It is real. We have created it. Um, you can check it out at rzenith.com. O u r z e n i t h dot com. We have Hot Heroes is on there. We have two other podcasts, amazing shows. We have Sleep Easy. It's a hip hop podcast about lyricism and poetry. Um, then we have Tectonic Shifts. It's a technology podcast about like whatever's on the news. Like Facebook's Facebook's coming out with this new cryptocurrency called Libra, which is about to be a fucking global currency. It's crazy. Trump's been tweeting about it. So we try to break all that down. We have two photographers on the show. Uh, I'm I'm talking to somebody about putting short stories on the show, graphic novels. JR, JR and I are working on a graphic novel. So we have a lot of content. We have a lot of content on Oz. And um, yeah, man, just check it out. It's a big deal. We've been working hard on this. So uh, thank you, everybody, for helping it come to be. And rzenith.com, O-U-R-Z-E-N-I-T-H. Yeah. Make us rich. <laughs> 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 The genuineness there at the end is beautiful. Yeah, no, it's something that Zach's been passionate about. I remember we were uh, back in high school, grab some tallies and go up to yep. the park, grab a pack of Camel Lights or Camel Turkish Royals and just right. look at the stars and talk about what we want to do with our lives. And Oz was the main the mainstay. Oz was the one. He knew, he knew he wanted to do it from the start. And he's been working on it since he was like 12. So something that's very fucking close to his heart and something that he's put a lot of love into. And it's really fucking cool to see it come to fruition and the views i mean the page visits everything's been pouring in so thank you guys so much for the support yeah thank there. you thank keep, you thank keep you thank coming. you thank you thank you it's only going to grow because you guys and then as always you know um check us out on social media at hop heroes pod uh twitter instagram follow us on facebook uh jr Vinny, you got anything you want to drop before we head out um for me i don't i don't have any plugs this week um not at all. I mean, just their normal, you know, stay to your local comic book store, support them because they support us. Action uh, City. Action City's our, our main gig. But um, yeah, other than that, I I, uh, I got nothing. <laughs> well, I will say I'm making a YouTube page for this video. So this video yeah, actually fun. was. Very Hopefully this cool. one makes to air. No, this one will, <laughs> this one looks good. The uh, last one was a huge failure. Week. But we'll, well make you'll, it. See but we'll, 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 you'll see snippets hey, of the last gotta, one, right? <laughs> you gotta fail before you succeed. Man. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. this one's gonna be a lot better. So I'll, there'll be a YouTube Pick account out there soon, try which will again. definitely get plugged on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. I want to do a video out. of us singing. If oh, there will be one. See, this is the Some beginning. Musical numbers, bro. This is the beginning so of the YouTube you channel. Again. Yourself up and try but, again. Yeah, <laughs> check out your local comic book shops, man. 
if you guys are listening and on love. Twitter and Instagram, like send us messages, comments of what beer we want, you want us to drink, what comics you want us to read, what stupid movies and TV shows, whatever's out there. Try to try to link up with us because we want to link up with you more. Please do. Keep it rolling. Keep the love coming. We appreciate you guys. Smile you for guys... the picture. I'm taking a picture. Why are you taking a picture on the mic? God. I know. This is we're on video. Everybody. We're on video, mom. Mom. Do I look dope? Do I look dope? <laughs> mom. Yeah, you look dope. <laughs> Alright. Thank you guys for listening. Uh peep the show the 26th, and our next episode will be dropping the reaction to it. So don't miss it. Only two episodes. You got no excuses. One love. See you guys next time. <laughs>